Good morning, this is Aunt Beth. Welcome to my lamp post, the light I'm currently living in. Today is Saturday, April 6th, and yesterday we had an earthquake. No oh boy. Monday we're to have an eclipse. It all sounds rather biblical, doesn't it? <laughs> Let's talk about it and what I think God is saying. I wrote down some notes so I didn't forget, so you forgive me if I look down a little bit more than normal. Yesterday's earthquake, at the time I didn't realize what it was. I was working at my desk here and suddenly I have a, a Christmas ornament hanging on my grandmother's mirrored vanity started rattling. I'm like, what? And not the house shaking or anything else like that. I have been in an earthquake where I felt the chair shaking, but no. This was rattling like somebody walking with a very heavy step. Amazing to think of all that power and energy when I'm more than 100 miles away from the epicenter. Anywho, this morning, right after we chat, I'm packing and leaving for Ohio with a girlfriend to hopefully witness the eclipse. There's a lot of cloud cover normally in the Midwest during this time, so we'll see. If anything exciting happens, I'll try and get a photo, you know, more so of the environment than the sun. So, and I'll share. But... What's God saying in all this? Or I believe that he is trying to get our attention. There's a lot of hype on social media. But like in the Bible, some people heard a noise. Some people knew that they were words, but they didn't understand the words. There were only a few really that heard clearly the words, but they all knew it was God. So praying past all the fear, hype, apprehension, social media stuff, and I thought I'd share what I believe God has said to me. So the first thing he said is that he will always speak of Jesus, of righteousness and hope. Now, there are a lot that, of people that are talking about judgment and discipline coming to America, and we certainly deserve it. <laughs> but if you think about it, a warning is hope. Um, some of this is generated by the fact that the 2017 and the 2024 eclipse actually make an X over America. In the 2017, it passed over like seven cities named Salem or Jerusalem for peace. But now it's passing over several cities named Nineveh, which, uh, and the X is going the other way. I mean, the stroke of the X is going the other way. And if you're not familiar with your Bible, Nineveh was a town that the um, Jonah, the guy swallowed by a whale, was supposed to go to and warn them that if they didn't clean up their act, God would in 40 days destroy their city. And they repented from the king all the way down. Everybody repented. And Jonah was really upset with the Lord that he didn't zap him. <laughs> so, he actually went up on a hill to watch him get zapped. <laughs> Just like, okay. So he had an accurate word. <clears throat> but anyway, he was hoping for judgment. But it depended on the people's response. Anyway, this eclipse goes through several towns named Nineveh, which is freaking people out. 
But a warning is a warning that we've got time, but don't wait 40 days. There's a lot of coincidences. Okay. Uh, one is that April 8th is two weeks before Passover. Passover is when, Jesus, when God delivered the Jews from their worldly system where they were in slavery. So, that's interesting. X, and they were in slavery in Egypt, by the way, and the, the next coincidence I think is fascinating is that X is marking the spot over a um, portion of southern Illinois that's known as Little Egypt. Isn't that interesting? Because it's known as Little Egypt because there was a famine in the, I believe, 1800s. And that portion, you know, that Delta River area is so rich, the soil is so rich, that they were actually able to feed the United States out of the produce from the area, just like Egypt fed the world out of their produce that they had stored up, but that ended up being the beginning of the slavery trap for the Jewish people. Anyhow, so what do Egypt and Passover mean in the Bible? Coming out of slavery, separation from the worldly, but most important to encourage you, provision, protection, and deliverance for those believers who separated. If you read in the Old Testament, God is quite clear that even though these terrible plagues were coming on the people in Egypt, there was light in the land of Goshen, which is the neighborhood that they lived in, and they did not go through those plagues. I want to encourage you. There's deliverance in the middle of all kinds of caca <laughs> going on. I also think that this is interesting that it's 40 days before the Christian calendar of Pentecost. So, and I know God works on the Jewish calendar, not the current calendar, but I still find these coincidences intriguing. One more. There's five planets lined up on that day. Five is the number typically associated with grace. But I think of that Old Testament statement that God is calling heaven to and earth to witness that he's faithful to his word. All right up. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. There's so many crazy coincidences happening. But God has got our attention. <laughs> He's also promised, as far as his word, that if we will repent, he will heal our land. Now, there is a corporate discipline and there's individual discipline, okay? So don't freak out. But the most recent thing he talked to me about is this eclipse is not about us, it's about him. He wants us to look up and lift up our heads. That he controls the sun, the moon, the stars. He is all powerful. He is able to deliver. He is able to protect, provide, and deliver for those who are in him. We had to live in the Goshen neighborhood in order to enjoy the protection, but everyone individually had to participate in Passover. Passover is a symbol of Jesus, <clears throat> the blood of the lamb over the door, and the angel of death would pass over. So, the word often talks about our, our lives like houses. Jesus the blood of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world for our sins. His blood over our life 
and the angel of death will pass over. April 8th, by the way, the day of the eclipse, is also the start of the new year in the Jewish calendar. So, I believe that God is on the, has heard our prayers. He's on the move, which is exciting. And if I were going to be really bold to share with you, I believe that the age of mystery referred to in the Old Testament the, the Daniel refers to it. There was a break in the weeks of the Jewish prophecies. I believe the age of mystery is closing and the Jewish um, timeline is resuming. But in all of this, God is speaking hope. He is speaking deliverance. He is speaking Jesus. He is speaking come help. Be separated from your entanglement. You know that ornament that was rattling that got my attention? <laughs> I have to show it to you. How's this? Can you see it? It's Noah. Another story of God's judgment, but also deliverance in the midst of everything. And provision. <laughs> starting fresh starting a new year so my opinion I hope this encourages you God is on the move have a fabulous day all God's best